Today we're going to meet Pasha. He is an expert in smart manufacturing. He's finishing his PhD, but he already got his I-140 approval for an EV2 NAW green card. Hi, my name is Oscar and I'm not a lawyer. In this channel, we talk about green cards like EV2NAW or EV1A in which you can self-petition. That means that you don't need to have a job offer, a company sponsoring you, and you can even do it without a lawyer saving a lot of money. Same way that Pasha did and successfully obtained his I-140 approval. Now, let's go with him and let's learn all about his green card journey. Hi, Pasha. Hi, Oscar. I'm glad that we finally recording this thing. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I'm very eager to tell my experience ex and share my part. Yeah. Yeah. So you got your I-140 approved recently. Congratulations on that. And, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about your case and learn about your profile, about your story, who is Pasha. So let's start with that and then we move to, to the details of your petition. So professionally, <laughs> who is Pasha? All right. So Currently, I'm, uh, I'm finishing up my PhD in industrial engineering, uh, but it's uh, my, my area of concentration is smart manufacturing, so I'm a manufacturing guy. And I got my first undergrad and master's back in 2013, and it was basically the same thing. I was doing automation for manufacturing systems. Uh, never worked exactly in that area. I worked as a design engineer for first two years where I was designing automatic door systems for railway transportation. Uh, then I moved to another city, bigger city, where I was doing shipyard stuff. <laughs> that was, was in the US or? Uh, back in Russia, back in Russia. Mm -hmm. So in 20, uh, 2015, yeah, I moved to St. Petersburg. That's a uh, capital of shipbuilding in Russia. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked for four years there as a design engineer of mechanical systems which mm -hmm. was not much connected to my uh, my education like uh, mechanical part yes but i was never doing I, I was never taught to do like ship like maritime engineering so i had to pick up a lot of that stuff um but then in 2019 i moved to united to united states to do my phd first it was mm -hmm. old dominion university uh, and then I transferred to North Carolina State University. But that NC State was one of my top schools when I applied mm -hmm. back in 2018. I was also accepted by UT Austin, but without funding. So yeah. I could have yeah. ended in, in Texas. Yeah. But, but it's so not. a couple of comments, um, not directly about your profile. We'll get back to that. But yeah. one, your background is very cool. I understand you are probably in your work area right now, <laughs> right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, you can yeah. see robots around me. <laughs> I, I was going to say that you have like an arm uh, mm -hmm. yeah, hovering uh, over there. That's pretty nice. And two fun fact, I, I, I didn't um, go to NC State uh, for any studies, but, pr but later uh, when I was working in, in this biotech company, we did have a project. So I was very close to the building where you are now, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, doing a project, a pilot plant project over there. They oh, have yeah. a good... A good yeah, we plan. have chemical. Yeah, we have chemical engineering. Uh, the building behind me, that's actually EB1. That's a chemical engineering building. So and, uh, and that's probably design. where I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I remember that you, you do have a very interesting library, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's also. in front over there. It has a big right. robot that fetches books and yeah. So also related to you, uh, yep. robotic. Yep. Uh, yeah, I remember there, there was like a huge thing and it grabs the books theoretically i didn't see it in action but yeah but i i went to take a quick look while we were there yeah yeah, yeah. nice so so you uh finally established yourself in this school in in raleigh um i i guess that's called the research triangle park right yeah a very yeah. a very happening area in the u.s for for research <laughs> that's the yeah. name right especially and, in biotech yeah that's a really place to be and you are not a doctor yet, right? You are still mm -hmm. going to graduate when? Soon? Uh, yeah, my defense is April 23rd, so I will graduate Whoa. in May. Yes, in May 4th. <laughs> uh, and uh, within a month, I'm, I'm moving to Texas. That's where I got my job offer. Nice. Well, congratulations also on Thanks. the job. I didn't know that part, so a lot of <laughs> a lot of good news. Uh, thank you also, Dado, thank you for being here so close to your defense. I know, I remember those times uh, are always a little bit stressful so i appreciate oh, it. yeah i'm spending seven days a week here in my lab yeah. 
seven days and seven nights. <laughs> yeah, that's also true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so we know now a little bit of of who you are. Um, let's start talking about your case, so that way we also learn what you plan to do, not only who you have been and and your education and and what you're doing right now, but Prong number one in EB2 and AW talks about your proposed endeavor, your plans, your mission in the US. So what did you tell the US government? This is what I will help you with. After COVID, the United States realized that offshoring is not such a great idea. Mm -hmm. And they and I've I think that if a lot of people follow US policies, they're trying to bring manufacturing back to United States. They have uh, they have approved it's called Science and Chips Act. So they're trying to bring back manufacturing to uh, to United States. And in October 22, there is a special committee on uh, science and manufacturing. They released a national strategy on smart manufacturing, and that was exactly the document that I was like, oh, there's 50 pages which mm -hmm. I can like address and do all those things. And then you also go to DOD, Department of Defense side, and they're also talking about smart manufacturing. Then you go to DOE, and the MC State is one of the uh, places where one of nonprofit organization is actually based in, especially mm -hmm. at my lab. So I had a lot of, uh, a lot of sources to cite to show that I am doing smart manufacturing, and this is exactly what a couple years ago, even a year ago, uh, White, mm -hmm. House, White House has released. So like, it was very easy for me to show that, oh, I'm doing the thing that is of national importance. Mm -hmm. And uh, b right before, so I submitted my packet like beginning of October, and I went to conference in uh, end of July in Man mm -hmm. like North American uh, Manufacturing Research Conference. And there were people from that committee that were presenting. And I was like, oh, that's going to be so easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So um, you, I don't know if you did, but you should have asked for a letter of recommendation from I, I, I did. And, uh, uh, and I can tell you that one of my recommenders, I met them on my first conference three years ago. They were asking me questions while I was presenting. We had talked after that. Um, then this year, they also were there, and uh, we also talked and yeah. presented. Actually, the second one also, we he's also non-personal, because we never worked directly. Uh, yeah, by non-personal, you mean independent, right? Yeah, independent, sir. Yeah. Yes, independent yeah. uh, uh, recommender. Uh, we work in the same area, so he's also a professor at West Virginia, So, uh, and I'm also a peer reviewer for the journal where he is an editor, so mm -hmm. like I know what he's doing, I know what I'm doing, so when I was uh, asking for a recommendation, he knew what I'm doing, so it was yeah. pretty easy to, to write and, a and, and this is a point that now I'm thinking that I should make, that usually when we talk about letters of recommendation, we focus on prong two, because it's like, well, this person will talk about my experience on this or, or my conference presentation or whatever. But one of these independent recommenders can also talk about pro number one because they are experts and yeah. they can explain how your endeavor, what you will do will help the US and do that analysis. So I don't know if that's that's a strategy you followed, but that's something that can be done. It, it just happens that I know personally people who wrote that strategy. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, I asked them to write recommendation, but because of uh, clearance, security clearance, they cannot do that. So I asked way more people to do that, and they told me, like, unfortunately, we cannot do recommendation mm -hmm. letters for non uh, non residents. That's also one of the things that even if you know some people, if they work in national labs, uh, they're probably not going to be. They're probably not not going to write you any recommendation because yeah. they cannot do that. But okay. other other people there, like one of the head of one of the nonprofits, uh, still government funded. Uh, but mm -hmm. they're not directly they don't they're not classified so he yeah. wrote recommendation for me too and yeah. he was and he was also uh so he was canadian and mm -hmm. he also went through eb2 process so he knows what it is so yeah, yeah he also wrote recommendation yeah. that helps a lot because uh most of times when you talk with people they have no clue of what you are talking about and and actually these letters are very strong so it's not like you know, I'll write a couple of lines and, and you're done. You know, you have to sign something that really 
you are committing to this person, right? So it's yeah. scary. And and if they know what it is, uh, it will help a lot. Uh, one thing that um, I like from what you said also is is that networking is extremely important. So you mentioned going to conferences or whatever type of, of event, uh, you can get a lot of value out of, of there, not only professionally, but for things like an EB2 and AW or EB1. That's 100%. And after, when I was applying and after I was, uh, I received my approval, uh, like my, I have friends here who are also PhDs and I tell them, oh, I did it, you can do it too. And they were like, oh, how did you get those recommendations? And I was like, conferences? You mm -hmm. just go to conferences. And some people go to conference, they present and they don't talk to people. I that's see. that's a mistake. When you go to conferences, people are asking you. When you are done, the presentation session is uh, finished. Go mm -hmm. and talk to them just personally. Uh, mm -hmm. Change like give them your LinkedIn link or emails or phone numbers mm -hmm. or something. Uh, In the past, it was the card, but now yeah, nobody, business cards. Yeah, yeah, nobody card. cares. Business <laughs> cards now. I I still do. I still do care. When I go to conferences, I always do. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, just make connections. Conferences are not just for, and they're primarily not for talking about mm -hmm. stuff that you have done. It's more about finding out what people do and finding people. Mm -hmm. And then it's yeah. not only for EB2, even further in your career, that's going to help you. Yeah, yeah. You, you may spark some collaborations and, and whatnot, right? And and job offers. Down and the also, line. Yeah, I'll, also, when are we going to talk about second stage? So. Yeah. That's exactly the conference when I asked the professor, I told him that, oh, I'm applying for EB2, I'm going to. Mm -hmm. And it will be beneficial if I can be peer reviewer. And mm -hmm. he told me like, oh, we are always looking for peer reviewers. Nice. So that's where I started reviewing papers because I asked that person. Yeah, no, yeah. Great, great. I think it's a great tip for everyone. You have to be proactive, you have to start early. Even even when you don't know you will apply for an EB2 and AW, you should already be working towards that. Okay, it's not going to hurt you, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, before we move to that part um, that we are already naturally going to your pro number two, did you use any professional plan as a standalone document, or did you just explain everything in your petition cover letter the same way I did? I didn't have any business plan. I was just saying that I'm working as a researcher, and I will be working as a researcher after that like in R&D, de developing technolo technologies that will benefit the United States and propel its uh, national um, competitiveness of in on a market. Also, safety, national safety, because uh, having offshore manufacturing is dangerous. Also, some of my work is in cybersecurity, so I was shown that cybersecurity threats pose this much billion dollars of uh, losses yearly, and this is how, like, what I'm doing is going to benefit and bring more security. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your area is one that really, uh, it is indeed nationally important, and there's plenty of evidence of that. So you are, in that sense, you are kind of lucky, but I mean, you're lucky because it's actually important, and, and yeah. you're lucky that there is documents to to back it up. Really? Yeah, I don't know if it would be <laughs> that actual, like if it was ten years ago. Yeah, exactly. I, exactly. I don't know I mean, if it would be that important. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't, and and yet sometimes timing is it can work well or or poorly depending on what side you are on. Are you serious about EB2 NAW? If so, I recommend that you take a look at my website, ev2naw.info, where you can find a lot of resources about this green card process where you can self-petition. And above everything else, I recommend you to focus on my course. This is the course curriculum, nine modules full of video lectures. Each of these modules has multiple videos where you can go step by step and learn how to craft your petition, how to put together your cover letter, your recommendation letters, professional or business plan. Everything that you need is in this course to allow you to self-petition, to do it yourself without a lawyer, if that is the route that you chose. Now we also have monthly live sessions where we go on a Google Meet call. You can ask me any question. We can see face-to-face -face and interact more directly. So take a look at that and let's go back to the interview. But yeah, let's let's now move to pro number two, which now the focus is on you, on what are your credentials to advance that proposed endeavor. So again, the proposed endeavor still has some importance because you're talking about what you will do, but it's more about 
qualifications. You already mentioned a few of them. What are those main aspects that you provided there? I took your petition as a draft. So, mm -hmm. and because we have these differences, at the stage when you were uh, making a petition, you already got your PhD and you were already working. So you had promotion. So you had your, those things to show. And I, at that stage, I just got my internship. I didn't have much to show that, oh, I command a higher salary. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, right before I sent my uh, petition, I just got my job offer. So I also did that research that my pay was a bit higher than median. Like for some sources, it was like really way higher. And some sources, it was just slightly above higher than median. Yeah. Uh, but my internship w was very high paid, like six figures for internship. That's pretty good. That's thing. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> even though it's interesting that I was not doing manufacturing in my internship, I was a data scientist mm -hmm. in the chemical R&D, which was mm -hmm. a completely different thing, but still, it was showing that I'm like, I was chosen. Um, I, I, I did have only one, I had only two publications with only one citation, which was also weak part compared mm -hmm. to 70 citations that you had in your case. <laughs> uh, so I was like, okay, how can you, how can I compensate it? So I also yeah. showed that I got my master's in 2013 and I've had the work experience and mm -hmm. I'm still currently working in pretty same area as I was working on. So I was showing the continuous uh, improvement in my career. Then I was also showing, okay, publications, going to conferences. I was showing, I, uh, I also got scholarships from professional societies. Yes, of course, mm -hmm. I was a member of two professional societies, even three professional societies. I got two scholarships from both of them. And mm -hmm. even this year, I, I mean, the last year, I also got another one scholarship. So I was just showing that this is the amount of money that I got for merit-based scholarship so it didn't like propose anything i was just showing that i worked in that area yeah. um also yeah. i tried to plug everything i could so i even uh so tau beta pi phi kappa phi honor societies yeah that's good yeah to get there you also have to be above they have to be like in top five yeah. percent class so i showed all that stuff i also showed proof that i was president of a society of manufacturing engineers here in university mm -hmm. also president of another graduate uh, student association so i was just mm -hmm. trying to show that i am like su successful person not yeah. only you know academically but also let's say entrepreneurially so because i'm doing a lot of stuff yeah. Even for my chapter here, uh, we gained platinum medal for a year mm -hmm. that I was president. So we did a lot of activities. So I just yeah. showed that I'm not only researcher, but I'm also successful leader. Yeah. And probably that also plays some role. We don't, no. we don't know what exactly plays a role, but I think that also plays. Yeah, that's the bad thing of getting an approval that then you don't know what works, but that's a, a good problem to have, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, there was no yeah, there was no RFE, so I just I just applied mm -hmm. and then I just got the approval within 90 days. Yeah. One thing that that I like from what you said is a lot of people uh focus on for example, memberships and they just list okay, I I am a member of this association and on on this other one, but you focus not only on the membership itself, but the role, you know. You are telling you know, I'm not only a member, you know, here I'm a president of this chapter. Here I go to conferences, I present, so I'm active, you know, it's not the same being a member than being an active member. So I, I, I mean, we, like you said, we will never know what worked and what didn't, but I think that kind of stuff really, really plays a role. And I don't know, maybe, maybe you can even get recommendation letters to back up certain things that you, you put in pro number two. I don't know if that's the strategy you follow, but those things will boost your profile yeah definitely like you you plug in all those things uh from recommendation letters into your petition even in in any piece of those prongs uh, mm -hmm. because those recommendation letters also show that people know your work and they know yeah. how it's beneficial yeah 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 experts in the yeah, field they, you know. of course they have to be experts it's not like you cannot just ask someone you know yeah. your <laughs> high school teacher to write your recommendation even <laughs> yeah. uh, even professor i wouldn't recommend choosing professor you were taking class that is not your actually endeavor area mm -hmm. so like for me i'm a manufacturing guy i took some logistics or computer science uh, classes i would not ask any of those professors because they're not authorities in those areas that i'm applying, trying to apply my knowledge in right so right. and since we are talking about 
this topic, the, the letters. Um, do you mind sharing how many, because I know people love numbers, you know, how many letters, out of which, how many subjective and independent? Yeah, so I plan to do, because I didn't have that many citations that you did, <laughs> I plan to have four personal and four independent. Uh, mm -hmm. And it ended up, I could get way more personal, but I was like, okay, I got my three personal. One was my advisor, mm -hmm. second was my uh, my another professor here in my area, and third one was my um, high-level manager in the internship that I interned in. Mm -hmm. So he could tell some stuff. And, yeah. and three independent recommendation letters, uh, two of them I met in conferences. One is a professor at West Virginia who is very respected yeah. professor in, his, in this area. One is from National Lab, from the part that, is, has, that has no security clearance part. So yeah. you write a recommendation letter. And mm -hmm. one is director of that nonprofit, which is a DOE spin, spin out for doing some smart manufacturing it's actually called smart manufacturing innovation institute so, okay, so that's perfect <laughs> uh yeah so he wrote the letter for me too so i got three independent and three personal yeah. recommendations yeah so uh, similar to my case then yeah 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 i because i wanted more but then i was like uh, it's not that much like, like if yeah. i'm gonna add one more i don't think there's gonna pay way more uh because i have pretty high stake people already recommended me and I think yeah. that's gonna be good. I, I was going to say that that um, a lot of times more is not better um, what and I know people don't like to hear these words because people like more you know and more numbers and bigger and longer uh, but more letters is not always the answer right the, what matters is are they high quality and are they talking about things that um, will provide value to your petition that are they making a good analysis on your endeavor on your profile because if you add five more but they are vague and generic i mean yeah that doesn't help, one, right? one thing about recommendations is as you know like you're gonna ask recommenders to write but they're gonna tell me like write yeah. something yourself so what i yeah. did is that i just wrote all those recommendation letters and it, and i asked them could you please write recommendation for me and here is a draft and I would like you to change it. Don't like mm -hmm. stick to it. Uh, but in most cases, they didn't change much. <laughs> they add a lot of, so I always add, uh, put the blank space for their information. So they have mm -hmm. to write down what who they are, mm -hmm. how they met me. So they did write that stuff, but everything else, they just kept it like that. And that's also the thing. Like if you're writing <laughs> six recommendation letters, it's gonna be very hard to make them different. Different, I know each other, right? So, and if person who's gonna read them, if yeah, they're gonna see that they are all pretty same, it's, yeah, it's it's gonna be suspicious too. <laughs> yeah, we all have the expressions we like to repeat over and over. So, so yeah, I I struggle with that part also, trying to you know uh, be a different person to write this letter. And sometimes the answer to that is you have to share with a friend or colleague and and ask you know. Do you think they look similar or can you make them a little bit different? Can you help me out? Because at the end, uh, we are not native speakers also. Now we do have ChatGPT and all those things that can help sometimes. Sometimes they don't help. Yeah. But but back in my days, at least, um, there was no ChatGPT. So, so and, and my English is not perfect. Um, most of us who work on this EB2NAW, EB1A, we are not English speakers. So, yeah, having someone help is very important yeah right mm -hmm. um so uh, one thing uh, i highlight also from your words is you were comparing you know my profile and yours which is something natural that we all do um i mean i did it back in the day with colleagues that had gone through the process like oh but you know this guy has 500 uh, citations and i don't know how many papers and and i had i thought at the time i had only you know seven publications Mm -hmm. um, now you are here demonstrating that, you know, sometimes having one or two publications or zero, depending on your profile, is fine. Yeah. So you have to balance things, you know. Um, it's not just publications. It's not just um, judging the work of others. It's not just uh, letters. It's like the, the, the whole thing um, all at once. So I think you did a good job in trying to figure out what can I add that that makes mm -hmm. sense for my case, for my profile, and for my level of experience also. 
a lot of people actually think, oh, look at Oscar. He did his PhD. That's why he's a plug in EB2. Or like, look at me, I'm doing PhD. It's not about PhD. Once you got your master's, it's not the question if you're eligible or not. Like if you got a, ma a master's, that's already good enough. You just need to show that you're working on something important and that you have already done something. Uh, yeah. Because it's still not EB1A. They're not going to look for like very high, extraordinarily abilities in there. No. Yeah, they're going to just look at that. You are doing important stuff, and you can do it. Good. Yeah. If you remember, even if you're going to be granted EB2 and AW, you still have to work in that area. Yeah, It's it's <laughs> not like you can do EB2 and do completely different. No, it's, it's, they're going to ask you and ask you, like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, is your case in front of them? It's not everyone yeah. else. And I, and I can tell that I had friends here from Iran. They told me, like, oh, if you don't have at least 10 citations, you should not apply. <laughs> Especially if you don't have a lawyer, and, mm -hmm. and when I was just trying in the very beginning of my uh, pro process, uh, I, I I refer to a company of lawyers who do that, and they have this policy that they're gonna file for you, and if you do not accept, you, you're not gonna be approved. They return you money. Yeah. So they they asked me some my publications, my other things, and they told me like we're not gonna work with you. Yeah, and I can understand because they don't want they want to be safe. They don't want to return mm -hmm. money, right? Yeah. So yeah. uh, they, yeah. they rejected me, but I was like, okay, I'm going to try. Uh, most I'm going to lose is $750. Mm -hmm. It's like not such a big, huge sum. Uh, and yeah, and it played played, played a good. So why? Uh, so you did that um, screening, I guess, with lawyers. Uh, you finally didn't go with, with any lawyer, but why did you decide to apply? What, what made you change your mind? So I first found out about EB2 because my friend did it, but he mm -hmm. did it from lawyers and he is like almost 50 years old and he's like very good. He has a lot of patents. He was in the beginning of Android Auto back mm -hmm. like 20 years ago. Uh, so he has things to show, but still he applied to the lawyers and lawyers were doing everything for him. But he explained to me that it's pretty easy to do and it can be very low key endeavor if mm -hmm. it's gonna somehow benefit the United States. So I started exploring those those things. That's where I found your your YouTube channel and other things. And I was like, he gave me a phone number of those uh, those lawyers. I mm -hmm. called them. They told me like, yeah, we can do everything for you. We can make a case for you. It's gonna cost you like ten thousand dollars because I'm married. So it's also for my wife for mm -hmm. uh, I four eighty five. And I was like, yeah, I probably can take a loan for ten thousand dollars. But mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait because that was the moment where I was uh, passing my prelim, so I didn't have time to invest that much. But after I did that, I started just exploring and watching more of your channel. And I was mm -hmm. like, I I mean, if it's if you understand how things work and mm -hmm. lawyers, they're not gonna write it for you. You still have to write all that stuff. You still have to find yeah. recommenders. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm paying for then. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. And I decided like, yeah, I mean, if, if people did it, I can do it too. So yeah. and I just started slowly working on it. And yeah, here we are. Yeah, here we are with with an approval. So that's 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 great. And yeah, no, thank you for for watching my videos. Of course, I I can't thank people enough. Uh, I can't thank because practically I don't know them. So <laughs> only the few of, of you who I meet. Um, so so you uh, basically use my petition and the videos, the videos from my channel and probably from other channels, right? You you didn't really use any other assistance in your case? No, no, I, I just took your petition as a draft and I was just, some places I just copy pasted, you know, just change my name things yeah. uh, and just change uh, names of like articles and something mm -hmm. somewhere where it was non-relevant to me. I had like made up things, yeah. but uh, I, I just followed your structure, everything, wording, like all those highlighted things like, mm -hmm. Like the actual words, I kept them to keep it mm -hmm. because I yeah. know that uh, vocabulary is very important for those people. They want yeah. to see specific Keywords. words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I kept that stuff. But yeah, I didn't use anything except uh, your petition. Then I spent some research on uh, finding documents. Except mm -hmm. that's a strategy because I needed to show something more. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it was just. Taking yeah. the draft, it took me a while. It took me probably a couple months because I was working full time at that time, and I was just spending my two hours, three hours a, a week, like in the evening every day to do yeah. something, because mm -hmm. it's not like 
straightforward plug plug and paste. Uh, no, it's and not. Paste. It's, yeah, you have to readjust things. You have to change the wording mm -hmm. uh, to collect documents and everything like that. So it took me probably two months to. to yeah, do it's it's an investment of time or <laughs> and or money depending on yeah. uh, the route. And before we go there to the final thing, which is the timeline that you already started discussing. Uh, let me just make this note. Uh, you mentioned, you know, I use the template and and the videos, and I did it by myself. For a lot of people, that is totally possible. Then it it really depends. So I I also don't want to make uh, people feel bad because we did it that way. I also did it that way. Um, some people get the template and run with it and will be super successful. Then some other people may need a little bit extra help and. And you know, I now have the the online course that that provides a lot more guidance with a lot of videos and and so on, and monthly live sessions and all that. Some people may need a lawyer. You know, that's yeah. that's how it is. Or, or a if, it's, if it's it really depends on on your personality and the number of hours you have to put here, your motivation to do this and sit down like you said multiple hours a day to do this extra work, which is like a second job. So. A lot of factors. I am an advocate for doing it yourself, but I also want to say, you know, for some people, maybe there's other options, and that's totally yeah, fine. There were some of your interviewees that you had that had a full time job. And when you have a full time job, sometimes it's smarter to invest in hiring someone because your yeah. your time costs way more than that. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. And but like you said, uh, hiring a lawyer will not mean that you will just. Yeah drop everything on the lawyer that 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 is not going to go that way but you'll get some guidance that mm -hmm. that otherwise you wouldn't get um but let's move on to what people really love to hear which is how long did everything take each step of the way you already mentioned preparation was what yeah. a couple of months uh so i can so the the time i found out about ebizu was january february last year 23 mm -hmm. so I did a lot of research on how to do things uh, until May, and it, and because I was preparing for my preliminary exam, it's a pretty big thing in PhD. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't, I couldn't spend much time on that thing. But when I moved to Texas for summer, that's where I started having some time, and that's when I um, when I purchased your uh, application packet. Mm -hmm. So that's where I started. So first of all, I read it. So it also took me probably like week to read because it's a big it's a big doc <laughs> document <laughs> all right to read everything uh, right. <laughs> and then yeah then you start writing so i think uh in beginning so from may to beginning of august that's where i was compiling all my like my uh letter the mm -hmm. uh, the petition itself mm -hmm. and uh i started writing those recommendation letters drafts and sending out to different professors and recommenders some were quick some were like oh i'm on vacation i cannot do that so now you have yeah. to wait wait yeah. a couple of weeks until they come back also yeah. i was waiting until summer i had only one publication mm -hmm. and one of my publications was about to come out so mm -hmm. i had i i sometimes it's you have to wait until they like, have more proofs. So, so I sent my application. It was like two hundred fifty pages. It was paper. So I, it I, was longer than mine. Then uh, I, most of that, like, I followed your approach. I printed all those references that I referenced to, and uh, national strategy was fifty pages. So okay, I, okay. I paid. I, I printed on double sided just to save paper, uh, but still like twenty five. One of my recommenders' CV was like forty pages. So, so yeah, I, had, I sent all that stuff in begin very beginning of October. They got it tenth of October, so I received mm -hmm. my notice back uh, that, that they received it. So I sent it, and then uh, in I was like, okay, it's three four months. So I was expecting. Uh, there are different apps on phones you can download, and they show you distribution on yeah. when when it should be okay. And in January, I was like, eh, maybe in February, January, February, where it's supposed to be. So that's where I started getting a little bit nervous mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. I didn't, didn't receive anything. But then one day, it's, it also was interesting. On uh, January twelfth, I received notification from that app that my uh, case was approved. 
and I was like, I can't believe it. So I go, I, I just uh, went on USA web website, checked it. Yes, approved, great, cool, mm -hmm. happy. Uh, and then three days after or four days after, I received one more notification that it was approved again. I was like, approved <laughs> again. And when you go on the history, they see that it was approved on twelve, and then it was approved on fifteenth. I was like, weird. Probably okay. Some yeah. Uh, and then yeah, a couple of weeks after that, I received my paper. Got uh, yeah. getting it approved. The notification. So so, what, what did you feel when when you got? Oh, the... I was super heavy. I was like jumping. <laughs> it was because it's, it's basically you did the the hardest part, right? So you have yeah. to prove that you're important. That's it. After that, you just wait until the priority day comes. Yeah, uh, which unfortunately is going to take yeah. a while now, but but it's a matter of time. I guess your visa is valid for for a while. So no, not the visa. Visa for Russians are only one year. My expired in twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, here uh, on I twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your visa stamp. Uh, yeah, but but you are on a valid status. Yeah, I still yeah. have three years of OPT. That's a good thing of STEM. So I just yeah. applied for it, um, and also my job is already filing H one B for me. So I have a lot of safety nets. Nice. Uh, so that's the best. The best way to go. You know, plan A, B, and C if you can. So uh, that company that you're going to work for is the same company where you did the internship? Or, or yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's also quite an interesting thing. So the, the company is uh, Dow Chemical. It's a big mm -hmm. chemical company. It's the second yeah. largest. Uh, but I'm not chemist, not chemical engineer. It's not of my interest there. But while I was there, I still was networking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that they have a department that actually doing what I'm doing. So they're doing... Mm -hmm. uh, R and D for di digitalization and smarter like automation and robotics for R and D, mm -hmm. and I just found a guy who's in charge there. We talked. I presented my work that I did here, and he told me like, you know, we have we exactly have a PhD position for you. Yeah. And after I finished my uh, my internship as a data data scientist, uh, I came back and maybe a month after that, I was invited for interviews. I flew there. Met yeah. the same people we talked, and uh, like a week after, I got the offer. Offer. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm very happy to hear that, and and congratulations twice. <laughs> you know, Thanks. for for that one for the approval. At some point, you'll get the green card. We'll see what happened with the visa bulletin, but in your case, yeah. it's not that relevant. And and yeah, and congratulations on the job, and. Congratulations to the US because now they get to keep you and and you will keep doing amazing things in DAO first and yeah we'll yeah see, we'll see where <laughs> at the end yeah th there is uh, there is uh, Oak Ridge National Lab which is doing exactly what I do but that's that's where you need to be a green card holder to yeah, get yeah. there yeah well uh, one day one day yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Pasha, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm sure this was a lot of value for a lot of people. So thank you for stopping by. And again, good luck with everything in your future life in the US. Yeah. Thanks, Oscar. Your help was invaluable on in what I was doing. And I'm glad that you're helping to everyone. And I always refer to your channel like <laughs> I did. This is my path that I followed. Mm -hmm. Just go, go yeah. there too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thanks.